So you got yourself an old wool blanket. Maybe like I did, you found it for a good price at one of the thrift stores. Maybe somebody gave it to you after they discovered it in a chest somewhere in the house. But when you got it home and you took a closer look at it, you discovered holes in it. Those holes could be rips, they could be moth-eaten holes. Very disappointing. Well, what are you going to do? A couple things you could do. One is try and repair the holes. Another thing is take the blanket and use it for projects, things that you can make and use while you're out in the woods. So in this video, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take this old wool blanket and we're going to turn it into a number of smaller projects. If you're interested in seeing what I came up with, stay tuned. Okay, before we begin, I thought I would just take a few seconds to talk about what you might be able to do to salvage your wool blanket and use it the way you had hoped you would in the first place. So if it's just a couple of rips, you may be able to do what the previous owner had done here and patch it. I don't know if that patch is showing up. And sew it up. And maybe that's all you need. As long as you're not too fussy about what it looks like, it's still a good functional blanket. But if it has moth holes in it, well, that's a different story. Because the problem is there still could be moth larvae in there or eggs at least in the wool somewhere which will just as they hatch eat at the wool and then just deteriorate the whole thing so if that's the case if you look and you find holes that don't appear to be rips they just look like the, the thing wore through you may want to consider treating it as if it does have the moth eggs still in it so the way to, get, to fix that is to take it and freeze it. In fact, that's what I did with this blanket. I don't think it has any holes in it from moss. I think it was just simply a rip in this one that somebody had repaired. But I hung it out over the line in my backyard in some minus 12 degrees Celsius temperature for two days. It also freshened up the smell quite a bit. But that way I know that the eggs of the moth larvae or the moth are, have been killed off. Now, when you bring it in, you might as well protect it. So if you're going to store any wool, plunk, any wool products, be they blankets or sweaters or anything else, good idea to protect them in a way so that there's no moth larvae laid on them later. The best way to do that is with some type of thing that will smell. It used to be mothballs. Personally, I don't like the smell of mothballs. But I prefer is to use cedar chips. And you can do exactly that. That's why the big old wooden chests were made of cedars, because they would protect the woolen products that were put inside. The moths can't stand the smell of cedar. So cedar chips are wonderful. You can also use little sachets or little bags of a number of fragrant herbs and spices or flowers and things like that. I'm not sure exactly which ones would be the right ones to use, but things that are fragrant, then put them in with your woolen products and that'll protect them. Another simple one and easily available are things like dryer sheets, like bounce dryer sheets. The smell, Eh, I'm not fussy about it, but it's not too bad. It doesn't last too long. If you put one in with each of your sweaters or each of your wool blanket, then you'll, that'll go a long way to protecting them. Even better is after you do that is to seal them up in a plastic bag for the off season. Okay, enough about protecting your wool blankets from further damage. Let's talk about what we're going to make with this wool blanket today. Okay, so the first project in this series is going to be something very simple, something very easy, yet uh, something that'll be functional and actually have multiple uses. I'm going to make a haversack. A simple haversack which just involves some folds and some sewing. So for this haversack, I, the, the measurements are going to be a little bit arbitrary. You can decide for yourself what you think is the right size. But what I'm going to go with is a 15 inch wide haversack. Now it won't be 15 when I finish the haversack. The reason be is because when I do some sewing I'm probably going to lose up to an inch. Maybe a little less but up to an inch. But I'm going to start with a 15 inch measurement. Just happen to have a 15 inch uh, ruler here that I can use to make the marks with. I know because I've measured that the width of this blanket is 56 inches and that's going to be plenty of material for a fold over, two fold overs as you'll see in a few minutes time. But uh, this uh, is going to be a very simple project because it just involves sewing in straight lines. So I'm going to put some marks along the blanket with the ruler. I'm going to use this piece of pine board to create a line with my magic marker. And after that I'll cut it off and we'll get to folding it and creating the, uh, the haversack. Alright, as you can see I have my 56 inch long by 15 inch wide a piece of wool blanket that I'm going to use to make the haversack with. So I'm going to be playing around with this a little bit to get it exactly right. But essentially what I want to do is I'm going to fold it up to create the body or the bag part of the haversack. And then of course I'm going to fold it down to create the flap. 
Now, this is somewhat arbitrary, as I mentioned before, so you know you are certainly welcome to do whatever you feel is is the the uh, the right thing for your project. But you'll notice that even now I have more flap than is necessary to cover the whole bag. So that's probably about where I want to be when I'm finished with this. So I have this little extra piece of material and I could do a couple of things with it. I could cut it off or what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it on and leave a small opening here that will create a bit of a pocket that I can access and put a few lightweight small things inside of that I can reach into and grab without having to open the whole flap to get into the haversack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some measurements and make some marks and where I want this to be when I'm finished with it and then we'll go from there. So without question, at least for me, the most tedious part of any sewing project is pinning the material. You don't have to pin all the materials and actually for the most part wool blankets are great that they don't have to be pinned when you put it together. But any material that has stretch or is slippery should have its seams or where it's going to be sewn together pinned in place. So I've elected to pin the end of the blanket where I folded it over right along here and you can see the pins where I've got them all inserted because it was just going to be a little bit too difficult for me to hold it as I ran it through the sewing machine. So I'm only electing to do this on one end of the blanket and you'll see where this is going to fit in as the project goes together. But I'm just going to take the time now. I saved you the time of watching me pin this and I'm going to save you the time of watching me sew this. And I'm just going to run a seam right along here. Just a word quickly, uh, I'm not going to show you a lot of the sewing process itself because either you know how to use a sewing machine or you need to learn how to use a sewing machine. If you have access one and you don't know how to use it, learn. The only way to learn is actually to get on there and practice. There's a lot of good videos on YouTube on how to use sewing machines and each machine will have a slightly different way of being set up and being used. Yes, there are universal principles that you'll use probably with all the machines, but uh, this is not going to be the content of this video. The video is not going to be about sewing, it's going to be about the project itself. Alternatively, if you don't have a sewing machine, you don't have access to one, you can easily do this by hand. Just a running stitch right along here or any of the other scenes that I'm going to show you and that will hold just fine. But I have a sewing machine, it's going to save my a lot of time and a lot of finger pricks from needles on my fingers, so that's what I'm going to use. So I'll get that put together and then I'll show you the next step in the process. Okay, next step in the process. Take your blanket piece, lay it out. And what we want to do is get an idea of what the finished product is going to look like, where the sizes are. You can make some exact measurements, or like me, you can be a little bit arbitrary and see if you like the way it's going to look. But before you make any folds and any, any sewing done, you want to decide what the outside of the bag is going to be, which side of the blanket is going to be in the outside. Maybe it doesn't make any difference. If the blanket's the same on both sides, you can go ahead and sew this and worry about that afterwards. But I've decided that I want this side of the blanket blanket to be on the outside when it's finished. Knowing that, I want to make sure that it is on the inside as I sew it. And the reason being is I'm going to be creating seams. Well, let me just give you an idea. I'm going to be creating seams here and here. I'm going to fold that inside out so that those seams are then hidden on the inside of the bag as we finish this up. So, that, knowing that, let's lay this Fold this up a little bit, see if I like the look of that. That looks pretty close. By the way, here is that seam I just made a minute ago on the sewing machine. And that was just to kind of finish and stiffen off this, this uh, part of the bag right here. That fold is going to be in the inside at the end. And then I'll take, this is going to be the top flap. And I want the top flap to come short of the bottom so it doesn't go all the way down. And knowing that we have extra material, again, this is something, a decision you can make for yourself if you've got a long piece like I have here. And that is, do you want to cut it off and just have it just a straight flap? Or what I'm going to try for this project is to fold it up and it will become a pocket in and of itself, as I mentioned in the beginning. But I'll show you that when we get there. For now, I don't have to worry about that. All I really want to do is get an idea of where it is that I'm going to sew down each side. The other thing you have to do, even before you sew this, 
is attach your shoulder strap. So here is something I haven't shown you yet. The shoulder strap that I'm going to attach to the bag. And again, this came from Value Village, our thrift store here in Halifax. Just a very simple, lightweight web belt that I picked up for less than $2. And this is going to be the shoulder strap. Now, I did look and see if I could find the longest one. I think this is about 42 inches. It's the longest one I could find that day. Um, had I needed anything longer than, than 42 inches, I would have picked up two belts. And then they could have attached using the D-rings or some other method to give you an adjustable shoulder strap. But in this case, I wanted to keep it super simple, super cheap. And I decided to go with just one belt. And 42 inches, I believe, is going to be exactly the right size. Now, here's the thing. You want to make your marks of where you're going to attach the shoulder strap to the bag before you do any other sewing knowing again that this is the outside when I'm finished, then this is the side that I want to attach the shoulder strap to. So what I'm going to do at this point is take my marker and just underneath the flap here, make two marks as accurately as I can, that is, for attachment points on the, sh on the bag itself. So. They probably could have marked that a little bit better, maybe like that, yeah. So what I'm going to end up doing is sewing that down here, bringing the strap around, lining it up correctly. I'm just doing this quickly to show you right now, and sew it on here. So I need to sew those two points down to attach the shoulder bag or the strap to the bag, and then we'll be able to sew that up. So I'll get the shoulder strap attached and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I have my shoulder strap shown on, sewn on. What I want to do is just quickly, before I lay out the rest of it, is to show you that I went back and forth probably seven, eight times here just to give it a really good attachment to the wool blanket. So let's lay this out. And you'll see where we're at right now. All right, so there's the shoulder strap attached. Now, just a word on this. This bag is not intended to be a heavy duty bag. It's not intended to carry a whole lot of weight. It will carry a significant amount, but uh, this haversack is a small, lightweight bag, or it could be a possible's bag, things that I'm likely to just carry around on the trail separate from my backpack. So things I want immediate access to, or if I take my backpack off and put it aside, things that I can walk around with maybe while I'm collecting some wood or some edibles or whatever it is I'm gonna do. All right, so moving on. Again, this is the outside of the bag. The straps are attached. I'm now gonna bring the main pocket up to meet those shoulder straps off camera, to, again to save you the agony, watch me do it. I'll pin down both sides, I'll sew this pocket shut, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, our bag is starting to take shape. Not turning out too bad so far. So, one thing I didn't mention when I talked about attaching the shoulder strap was, is to come in a little bit from the edge. In this case, it's not quite a half an inch, and that was to allow for my seam allowance, because of course, now that I've sewn down here, um, we don't want the shoulder strap to be starting to turn inwards on the bag. So just bring it in just a little bit on either side when you, when you uh, sew that on. All right, one little challenge I just came across when I was putting this on through the sewing machine is I couldn't get the very top part sewn down because I was now looking at three layers of wool blanket. In fact, on the outside here is the outside finished edge of the original blanket, so that made it even a little thicker. So I am gonna have to sew this last little part down by hand, no big deal. My fingers can withstand a couple needle pricks, I'm sure, and then that will be finished off perfectly. Now, if I had let it not to make this fold, and you don't have to make this fold here, then I would have been dealing with just two layers of fabric, and the machine would have handled it. Your machine may be different. You may have something a little bit more heavy duty that could sew right over that with no issue. Okay, from here on in, I'm going to turn the bag inside out and it will take up its final form. So now you'll see what I mean about those seams being on the inside. Let's turn the bag inside out. Straighten it out a little bit. Punch out the corners inside. All right. This will flatten out with a little bit of use. So there basically is the main pocket. Here is the flap that's going to fold down, and again, I decided for my project that I wanted the flap to extend past the bottom of the bag, 
and then fold back up to create a little tiny outside pocket very near to the bottom of the bag. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned so far is how you might keep this closed. I'm not going to worry about it. Some bags made of wax canvas, made of leather, made of nylon. Uh, they have attachment points, so either a buckle and a strap, or maybe some type of a, a button and a loop that you put through to keep this closed. I'm not going to worry about that because, quite honestly, I don't see anything falling out of this. So mine's just going to fold over flat like that and not have any attachments. If you decide you want to go a little further and put attachments on yours, then I'm sure that'll work out just fine for you. So my next step here is to sew this little mini pocket that I talked about. And we're done. All right, let me get that and done, and then I'll show you where we're at. All right, here it is, the finished product. That turned out pretty good. A few things I think I'd do differently if I were to do this over again. I'll come up to the camera in a second, show you what it is. But I think very functional nonetheless. There's that little pocket on the outside I mentioned. I can reach in and grab a few small things. Flap, I can reach all the way to the bottom of the bag. And make no mistake, this is a good size bag. Let me come in a little closer and show you a few things that I would probably do different next time. Okay, one of the things I discovered, and I didn't realize it until I put the bag over my shoulder for the first time, was I had assumed, through measurements, so I guess it was more of a guess than an assumption, that this strap would be just long enough. Turned out it was way too long. In fact, more than long enough. So I was able to make use of that, not enough that I could get an adjustment on it when it's on my shoulder, but what I was able to do is take those two D-rings that were on it and put them back on with a little, uh, I don't want to call it a flap, a little extension. So now on the front of the bag I have the D-ring hanging down the front by extension, and that's true on both sides of the bag. You can see there's another D-ring on the other side over here. So I have something I could hook a pair of gloves on or something else, maybe a lanyard to a fire steel or something I don't want to lose, and that's there. So And it still gives me plenty of length. As you can see, I put it on top of a wool jacket just to show you how long it is. Uh, what else would I do differently? Well, when I sewed down that main seam, now this is right side out, but when I sewed down that main seam inside out, of course I narrowed the bag by the width of that seam. What didn't happen was the flap itself wasn't narrowed. So uh, one of two things I could have done. I could have cut in a little tiny bit on the edge right here, just make it a little bit more narrow for the whole length, or I could have folded it over and sewn a seam all the way down like that. It's more cosmetic than anything. It doesn't do anything functionally for the bag as far as that goes. Let me throw it on again over my shoulder. Couple more things. This is a raw edge of the blanket. Now, I've done a few projects with wool blankets before, and that raw edge has not been a problem. It hasn't unraveled like it would with a lot of materials. However, if you want to be sure to keep it from unraveling, and maybe to give it a little bit of artistic flair, you can do what's known as a blanket stitch, which is kind of a, uh, uh, well, it's on the outside of the edge of most of the blankets to start with. It comes along and loops, goes a little further and loops. I'm not about to show you a blanket stitch right now. I may do that in a future project, but if you're interested in seeing what a blanket stitch looks like, it's meant for finishing the edge of a blanket off to get rid of that raw edge more, more than anything else. All right, let's wrap this video up. You know, I wanted to do this haversack or satchel for a couple of reasons. First and foremost was that it was going to be very easy. It was just a straight cut right across the end of the blanket. It got rid of that end where the hole was that had been repaired by the former owner. It was just straight sewing down seams, very simple measurements, very little pinning to put this together. And it came out pretty good and it's a good size. It's a little larger than I might have used for, for a haversack, but still it's good size haversack. The other reason I wanted to do this, of course, is that it's multi-use. This is three layers of wool. And if I'm out right now, especially now during the winter, I can take everything, the contents out of this bag, lay this down, and I've got one very warm seat to sit on or even a kneeling pad opened up, that's not a bad piece of material. It's not big enough to lay on top of, but it's a good sized piece of material to lay things out on the ground, or as I said, it's a, a sitting pad. So it's a dual purpose uh, item, and that's what I wanted to create with my first project. 
Okay, let's wrap this video up. What I wanted to do with this series on wool blanket projects is to open up to the possibilities of things you can make out of items that otherwise may have gone into the trash. This was the first in the series of projects that I have for you, but I wanted to open up the, the whole series to you. First off, what, if anything, would you have done differently or would you like to see me do that I may consider doing to this project, the Haversack? What other projects would you like to see me attempt to make with the wool blanket? I'll tell you what's up next. You may want to stay tuned for mittens. So if you're interested in seeing how mittens are made out of a wool blanket, stay tuned for that. But until next time, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.